So in the introduction to Project Franken Mill, I mentioned that I wanted to be uh, making some other pieces to enhance the functionality of my Sherline Mill. Um, I also mentioned during the alignment that I was going to be making some uh, jigs and fixtures to make precision alignment and, and holding that alignment in place uh, a little bit easier and more accurate. And this is the first part to accomplish that feat. Now, uh, this is a fairly large piece. Um, it's probably the largest piece that I'm going to, to make as part of the uh, Project Franken Mill. And you don't necessarily need to make it this large. One, I've made it oversized because I'm still not sure what else I may want to add or change in the future. And it's far easier to remove uh, material later rather than try to add it back on. So I have left some of these dimensions oversized. And my goal here is to make this as bolt-on as possible. To bolt this piece on, we will need to drill two holes in, in the ram of the mill. So this will be placed behind the head. The front of the mill would be over here. The head would be located here. The uh, left to right tilting adjustment for the column will fit in this space here. So we'll machine all this out. And we'll have these two fingers up on either side which I've got a couple of ideas for, and I may change the design of those a little bit as well. Uh, this area is just solid. This is where the front to back nod of the column sits, the joint for that. And then here is where the, the factory plate sits for adjusting that front to back nod. I'm going to actually replace this with this piece. So I've used the factory piece to give me my locations. Uh, I'm going to drill a number 21 hole there to thread our adjustment screw, although long term we'll probably be eliminating this function and, and we could possibly change this area out a little bit, but for the near term I want to keep that function on there. And then we'll drill a couple of clearance holes for these two screws to go into the existing holes in the RAM. So this will sit on top of the RAM. Then I'm going to cut out an elongated section here, and that's going to be for the uh, large washer and nut that clamp the, the ram that slides back and forth to the rear circular column. So this will still allow us to move the ram forward and back with this piece mounted. A couple of these holes are just alignment holes and clamping holes for securing them to the rotary table. And then I've got the same thing here in the back, a couple of holes for securing to the rotary table. And then I'm going to drill a couple of holes back here to match these two up here. And this will then require me, I'll use these as guides. So I'll drill these uh, to number 21s and then use them as, as a guide hole into the top of the ram, which I'll tap for some 1032 screws. And we'll have four points securing this to the top of the ram. I'm not going to give you all these specific dimensions because I recommend you get them off of your mill since you might have a different uh, model or variation. But I started out with the piece a little bit over four and a half inches wide and approximately 14 inches long and we'll need about 12 and a half inches of that or less. Again, I've left a little bit of material front and back that's excess. I'm making this out of uh, Mike 6. So this is a, a cast aluminum plate. So it's, it's going to be very stable. Um, it's a half inch thick. And this is what I had on hand. I'll post the, the eBay reseller that sells these plates. They're, they're cutoffs and they're fairly reasonably priced. Now I'm not going to be showing all the individual machining steps. I'm just going to go ahead and start drilling my holes in here. And uh, possibly rough this out with a jigsaw. Once I've got some of the holes drilled. And we'll go from there. Okay, so here's my setup for drilling. And I drilled these two holes here to number seven. And these will just be used for clamping the piece down to the rotary table, along with these two holes as number seven, again, for clamping down to the rotary table. And then I've got these two as number seven, which will end up uh, clamping it to the, this will, this will screw it down to the ram on the mill. And then I've got this one, uh, number 21, and I tapped it, and I just put a screw in there to. Um, to keep the threads clean. 
So these two holes I drilled to 3 8 of an inch and they're well inside the layout lines. So this will allow me to either bandsaw or jigsaw out the majority of that workpiece. The clamping here isn't ideal uh, because I ran out of table. So these clamps are canted a little bit, but for drilling these smaller holes, um, it's more than sufficient. Now I'm going to cut this out before I attempt to do uh, these two holes, which I'll put starter drills into and then I'll bore them out uh, for, uh, for an alignment to go onto the rotary table. And then I haven't drilled these two holes down here, which I'll drill to number 21, uh, but I don't want to drill into my parallel, so I'll do that once I move my clamping setup as well. So I cut out this notch down here, and I drilled the starter hole, and now I'm just boring this out. And this is just to function as a locator hole on the rotary table. And once I have this one to size, I'll do the same thing down here. And so that's a pretty good fit. This is a, a chuck adapter that screws down into the rotary table in this method. And it's designed uh, to mount a 3 quarter 16 chuck on it. So I've just got a hole that's slightly under 3 quarters of an inch. And again, I'm just going to kind of use this as a center locating pin. Now I've got our workpiece mounted on the rotary table and I have some parallels um, placed here and here to keep it off the face of the, the rotary table. So as we cut into this, we don't get into our rotary table. Um, I do have this center hole and there's the, the screw down in the bottom of that to register that hole that I made. And then I have these two clamping holes into the T-slots on either end. Um, this screw is just to keep the threads clean, so you can ignore that. And I'm going to start with just a very fine, thin cut. So here I'm just taking uh, 50 thousandths with each pass. Okay, so now I have uh, both ends radiused and I'll use a jigsaw to uh, cut this middle piece out and reclamp it down to the table. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you the actions of a roughing cutter. Um, this one happens to be a four flute made by HTC Tool. They call it their hog cutter. But these have serrated edges and they're made for very fast and aggressive cutting. Now what I've got in the background here, a relative background, is a very rough cut from a, a saber saw or jigsaw. So I thought I'd try to show you the finish that this cutter produces. So this is a 40 thousandths cut. On a half inch thick. 6061 aluminum and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see just the fine spray of small chips that this cutter produces so those smaller chips clear easier if you're doing a through hole or something along those lines as well So I've come in and there were a couple of uh, items I didn't notice on the mill, which were the indicator uh, for the left or right tilt. There's just a small screw with a pointed piece of metal to indicate the, the degree of tilt to left or right. So I cut a, a notch here for that. And then also I didn't notice on the back of that same um, adjustment wheel, I had measured to the outer diameter and there's actually a second wheel on the inner diameter 
So I just cut a clearance slot in the bottom of the plate for that. So here's the rough version of the top rear mounting plate. Um, I've got the cutout here in the middle for the washer to get into. Um, so I'm not interfering with that. I can take this on and off without needing to remove the washer. At this point, the unit has basically just replaced that little simple piece, um, which is right across here. So I've retained that functionality as far as being able to adjust the forward and back tilt. Now I am limiting some other items. I am limiting the left to right tilt here. Um, actually, right now I'm probably limiting the front to back tilt with as tight as this, this, this clearance here is. So I'm going to end up taking a little bit more off of here. But I don't plan on, on using those tilt functions. So, And then I have left, I've got some rough finishes still and some rough corners um, and haven't deburred it and haven't taken the bluing off. Um, this was just a test fit to see how I liked it. And I think it's going to work out quite well. Um, I'll do a little bit more cleanup on it and we'll call it roughly finished. I'm going to wait until I have the rest of the uh, pieces, which I'm going to build a column up off of the back here. Um, and that column, I'm not positive if I'm going to do a, a boxed column or an I beam or what I'm going to do there, but whatever I decide, um, I don't want to make any more changes to the plate until I have that column portion finalized as to what I'm going to do with it.